Derek Givno along with Matt Rose here at DRF headquarters to talk about Harris, Philadelphia for Sunday. It's May the 27th. They have a huge day of afternoon racing starting at 12.40 p.m. Three big stakes races, $150,000 apiece. PA Sire Stakes. They also have the Great Northeast Open Series, mm -hmm. and we get the Horse of the Year, Hanno Hanover, is going to be in action, which is pretty cool. We're going to look at the three $150,000 races. They start with race number 10. It's the Maxi Lee Memorial, and it's on the trot, and we got quite a field here, including Mary Marauder as your morning line favorite. Yeah, I can see Mary Marauder, deserving morning line favorite, uh, coming back, making his first start of the season. Last week at Harris, Philadelphia, a solid two-move effort to win. Uh, we know the resume of this one. Uh, obviously, he's uh, one of the horses to beat, but uh, this is no, this is no gimme here in this spot. Uh, we have some uh, legitimate speed horses and uh, some legitimate class horses in here. And uh, me personally, uh, I'm going to try to beat Mary Marauder. I'm not going to go out on a, a large limb, but uh, I, I like the way we'll we'll take charge as races last few starts. Um, it's a perfect mid-pack post. We saw we saw a couple of problems with breaks. He broke once at Yonkers, uh, followed up with a with a sweeping off the pace effort. Uh, broke in his last start at Pocono, recovered to win going away. Uh, I, as long as he behaves himself from its inside spot, uh, I think he's as good as any, and uh, may you know may have a slight uh, upset chance as a slight uh, probably second choice to Mary Marauder. Yeah, th there's certainly a few horses in here that can upset. I think one of the issues that I have with Mary Marauder is, well, first of all, you're going to get a pretty short price, I would think. And uh, second of all, you're starting from the inside post, which with the slanted starting gate might not be the best spot on the 5 8 mile track. Yeah, I was going to mention that uh, that uh, on a 5 8 track, this horse doesn't have uh, blazing speed. He might get away fourth or fifth in this spot. And I know a popular move on 5 8 tracks is to settle it, let the speed settle and brush to the front. I can't see, I can't see him doing that here. Probably be looking... Maybe the first over grind, or maybe uh, maybe end up second over here, depending on how many outside horses leave. Uh, but yeah, you got like quite you said, a bit of speed in yeah. this field, particularly. We, I know my chip will take charge. Crazy Wow could leave, so there there's, should be a decent pace setup. Yeah, which is which is uh, why I, ex I expect Mary Marauder to get away mid pack here. Um, I, I know my chip probably be a big price here. Has done nothing but show speed. He raced well in the Cutler, the Meadowlands. Uh, Crazy Wow should be forwardly placed. Uh, I would imagine Andy Miller driving uh, Tawana Blue Rex, uh, although I don't like him to hit this in the spot. You got to figure he might be taking a shot off the gate uh, because you're not you're not going to do anything get away from last. Um, but yeah, I just see Tim Tietrich, perfect mid pack post, uh, versatile trotter that's really coming to his own this year. I don't see why not with him. Speaking of taking a shot, I'm going to take a shot with number seven, Broadway Donna. I just really like what I saw from her. Even going back to her, her last qualifier that she had where she finished second behind Hanover Hanover, I thought she was very good that day. She came out with a huge mile you know, against the boys as she faces today in her lone Meadowlands start. I just feel like she looks really sharp right now. Dave Miller is going to have to try to find a way to get a trip here. But uh, he is a Hall of Famer, so I Dave think he can get it done. Uh, Dave Miller's choice over Crazy Wow, uh, if, I, if I'm correct. It was his choice, and uh, I, that's not necessarily the reason why I'm picking her, but... Uh, can't hurt. It can't hurt. Let's move on to race number 11. It's another $150,000 race. It's the Betsy Ross for the Mayors on the pace. And this is another strong field here. Maybe the most competitive of the three. We got Pure Country, who seems to be uh, winning a Dan Patch Award every single year. Charton is... The top mayor in the country right now. I think she leads the country in earnings. Agent Q's razor sharp. Darwin on the beach has uh, tons of credentials and a million in her bank. Uh, where'd you go here? Um, I want, I'm going to try to beat the, the the favorites again here. Obviously, Charlton and you see listed nine to five on the morning line. Aside from that that one break in the in the blue chip match, Rika Yonkers has, has just been absolutely perfect and and his wins have been dominating, uh, including his last start in the uh, Chip Noble final a, a, a race at. Uh, Miami Valley. Uh, I'm going to take a stab with a horse that, that usually uh, the type of horse I try to play against, but I really kind of like her in the spot. The five aging Q. Um, two for two to start a four-year-old campaign. She had a solid uh, two and three-year-old season. Uh, I just it just came off the bench so sharp, swept the field from last, uh, running over Pure Country in the in her first start at uh, Pocono last week. A nice two-move uncovered effort at Philly, and uh, again I just like the mid-pack post. I'm not I'm not willing to take a short price in Charlton N. I'm not convinced that Pure Country is maybe 100% ready, uh, maybe needs another start or two to hit uh, top form, and uh, it could, could be a halfway decent price here. I imagine Charlton is going to take uh, most of the money, maybe not odds on, but definitely the favorite, and uh, 
I don't think she's invincible here. I, I agree with you. I don't think Shorten's invincible in this spot at all. I think this is actually a pretty big test for her. I mean, if you, those blue chip matchmaker races are good races, but you didn't get the pure countries, the Darwin on the beaches, the Asian Qs weren't there. And now mm -hmm. this is kind of a little bit of a step up. Even the Chip Noble, she didn't face the toughest field in the world. Uh, I, this is really going to be a good test for her. She's going to be the favorite, and I can't bet her as the favorite in this particular spot. Turns out I went to Agent Q as well. <laughs> I just absolutely love what I saw from her. I mean, she blew by, literally blew by Pure Country. I, I couldn't even believe it. She barely put up a fight as far as I was concerned. Granted, I think Pure Country is going to keep getting better. Um, and she certainly could be good enough this race to come up with a monster effort and win here. But I just love what I saw from Agent Q. And incidentally, Dave Miller chose off this one to go to Darwin on the beach. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Darwin on the beach in this particular spot gunned off the gate and tried to go to the top. You know Sharton's probably not leaving. You know, she tends to get a little fired up. Agent Q's game really hasn't been leaving. I wouldn't be shocked if Darwin on the beach was on the lead. No, absolutely. You could see Darwin on the beach, even Blue Moon Stride, you could see taking, taking a shot off the gate from the two outside posts. Because like I mentioned in the previous race, uh, you can't, you're probably not going to get anything come way last. So I imagine one of those two could set up a, a quick opening quarter, maybe compromise pure country chances if it figures to be pushing off, uh, which could set up a horse like Agent Q. So. I'm going to stick in that direction. Like I said, it's funny. Uh, it's the type of horse, a four-year-old, that I usually would try to pick against. But uh, for whatever reason, I just I think it's just a perfect spot. This is part of a $10,000 guaranteed pick four on uh, Sunday's card. It starts in race nine. This would be the third leg. And I'll definitely have Darwin on the beach on my ticket somewhere, even though I'm picking Agent Q. Let's move on to race number 12. It's the Commodore Barry, $150,000 once again on the line. And this is a pretty interesting field in here. We have Filibuster Hanover, who's a four-year-old, has won all three of his starts this year. You got a couple other four-year-olds in, in this race as well, who, you know, figure to be in contention, and Western Joe and uh, British Crown winner uh, Beckham Zetam. Um, it's an interesting race. Where did you end up going? Because there's a lot of speed. Western Joe's got speed. Filibuster Hanover could leave. I don't think he will this week. Rodeo Romeo has been really sharp. He's got speed. Yeah, like I said, it's an interesting race. We have a couple of razor sharp four year olds in Western Joe and Filibuster Hanover. We have two old classy campaigners, McWicked and Mocket So. They're stuck in the seven and the eight hole. And then we have this uh, Ross Krogan um, down under import, Heaven Rocks A, uh, making his first, making his second start. His first start was obviously. Very good, missing a neck in 27-2, conservatively raced from off the pace. Uh, you see him loose at 5-1 the morning line. I suspect he's going to take a little more attention than that. Uh, I'm actually going to take a stab at one of the two four-year-olds. I'm going to go with the two Western Joe from what I believe is the one-horse barn of uh, Chris Choate. Um, he's been absolutely super this year, uh, won almost half of his races. Uh, we saw kind of what you could say with the bad luck, I guess, in the Confederation Cup. Kind of controversial uh, race with him and uh, Phil Buster Hanover uh, with some pylon uh, situations or whatever. Meanwhile, it was a solid speed effort in the elimination and the final. We saw this sort of race super all season at the Meadowlands. Um, you know what? I, I don't know if he does get away on the lead here, but uh, I, I think this inside spot and his inside speed could set him up for a winning trip here. He could be sitting behind Rodeo Romeo, who seems almost certain to leave in this spot, and that would be a pretty good spot to sit in, I think. I went a little bit of a different direction. I went with number three, Heaven Rock Say. I mean, we saw his effort. The qualifier was, was spectacular. He was parked out a long way, ended up finishing second, came last week, and while it looks like on paper a little bit of a covered trip, it really wasn't. I mean, he was uncovered down the back stretch, uncovered the whole final turn. He seems like a horse that has a, a big set of lungs and can keep going. You know, he was still, you know, pacing hard right through to the wire going after him. And that was on a sloppy track, that 49 and change mile. So you might want to take that into consideration. I like what I saw for owner David Miller, who's also on the bike. Uh, Misty Miller, I believe, is down as the uh, one of the owners mm -hmm. here. Uh, I just like what I've seen from him so far, uh, assuming I don't have to take, you know, a ridiculously short price, like well, 8 what, to 5 or something I, like I, that. Honestly, I'm looking at this horse as going off the favor in this spot. I think everyone's going to be on board with him. And that, that's why I went in a slightly different direction because I do think he's going to be, he's gonna, from this spot, he's going to be way over bet. He's got the reputation. He's got that one solid tightener. He's got a good post. Uh, he's, I just think he's going to take all the money here, and that's why uh, there's no value there, and that's why I'm going to try to look elsewhere. If he's they obviously go, on my tickets. If they do go that way, I mean, he might just, he very well might be first over in this spot with Phil Busta Hanover following him because I, I really don't think he's going to leave in this spot. It's not a great spot for him to leave. Not with Rodeo Romeo and Western Joe probably firing off the gate. 
Yannick could be in a pretty good spot with filibuster Hanover if he's a decent price. He's certainly one you want to have on your ticket. Oh, I absolutely. I mean, I'm going to have, obviously, having Rocks on my ticket, filibuster Hanover. I may throw McWicked in, uh, in my ticket. He came back strong. Casey Coleman, his first start up at Woodbine at, uh, excuse me, Woodbine at Mohawk Park. Let me get that correct. Uh, and we know it is. We know we know his resume. Uh, Two point three million in the bank. He no, can Sears definitely tends to him drive him conservatively. All the drives when Sears has had him, he seems to you know take his time with him. Uh, I'm just saying that's what I've seen. It's like you're time. setting. It's like you're setting me up for something there. But uh, I'm uh, not setting you up for anything. I'm going to throw him on my tickets to try maybe super tickets. It wouldn't shock me if he was gotten a number. I mentioned the classy market so in the race also. Probably a very tough spot from the eight poles. I don't know if he can leave. I don't know if he can reach if he doesn't leave. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume if I get value on Western Joe and the four year old, I'm gonna use him and over the likely over bet Heaven Roxay. Sounds good. Well, I go Heaven Roxay. He goes with Western Joe. That's a look at the three stakes races on the Harris Philadelphia card from May 27th. Really great card from top to bottom. There's also, uh, I think, three great uh, Northwest, Northeast? Northeast, Great Northeast. I'm in the wrong a a region of the country here. Great Northeast series, three divisions of that. Like I said, Hanover, Hanover, Horse of the Year is going to be competing. Three of these, a couple of sire stakes races, and you, you make for a, a great 14 race card starting at 1240. Good luck and watch it all live on DRF.